The whole topic of women artists and female fronted bands intrigued me, so I thought we should carry on in that direction again. Tonight, we'll hear from women who are making an impact in the Christian music scene and coming from widely diverse styles. And since it's their voices that are making a statement, it seems fitting to open the night with the song Voices Carry from the Echoing Green. We'll also meet an artist with a style we've never had on the antidote before. The Canadian operatic soprano, Tonya Evans Chinchuli. Tanya and I chat about her just released album, Hymns of the Heart. That's going to come up right after Sophie Key, an Australian singer-songwriter now living in Ecuador, as she delivers her new song, Trinkets. The Antidote has a special guest tonight, Tanya Evans Chinchuli. Tanya, this is a real pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much. You know, I was going to describe you as an opera singer, but maybe that's too limiting because it's not only opera that you perform. Yeah, I, I started out in classical and opera, and I've come to the realization over the years that I am, you know, able to sing other genres of music, and I, I don't like limiting myself. And so I just honestly figured if God gave me a voice to sing, I should sing everything that brings me joy and not just opera. So I'm waiting to hear about your new metal music project. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> never say never. <laughs> <laughs> never say never. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Seriously, what about telling us about your music roots? How did singing begin for you? Uh, you know, honestly, the first time I ever heard my own voice sing like that I can remember was actually in church, going to church on Sunday mornings with my parents. And um, I was lucky to be featured in some solos in the in the kids' choirs and that kind of thing. And and it was cute. You know, a few people came up to my mom afterwards saying, uh, you know, your daughter can really sing. And, and she thought, well, of course she can. She's my daughter, you know. But, you know, she was actually like, wow, you know, she can actually sing. And so I started taking some voice lessons from a lady at the church and, and it just grew from there. Now, the interesting thing is that you are originally from Newfoundland. Yes. And when I think of Newfoundland, I tend to think of Celtic and folk rock bands. Right. So I guess the question is, do Newfoundlanders consider you an anomaly? Uh, well, you know, it's interesting you bring this topic up because two years ago, right before the pandemic, I co-authored a book on Newfoundland's first international opera singer by the name of Georgina Sterling. And she lived between 1867 and 1935. And so being a lover of opera and being from Newfoundland, her story greatly intrigued me. And so my grandfather, who's a, a veteran author, he and I set off to do a ton more research that was made available and, and wrote this book on her. And throughout, I also really kind of, you know, picked over the rocks on the shore and, and really kind of peeled back the layers, too, of my own roots and certainly uh, have fell in love with that sort of hauntingly beautiful folk sound that, that I feel comes from Newfoundland as well. So it's all really unfolded in, in such a synchronistic and beautiful way to to bring me to singing a lot more variety of music. Well, with you speaking about your book, you're selling yourself a little bit short because <laughs> you're an award-winning author. But yes, you, it did yes. leave me wondering, was writing a book a stretch for you? Uh, I've always loved writing and always thought one day I would love to write a, a book. And then when I was sitting in Memorial University, Queen Elizabeth Library with my grandfather looking over this new research that had been turned into the library, he turned to me and said, we need to write the definitive biography on Georgina Sterling. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, and then at times over the journey of writing that book, I literally sat there crying, thinking, oh my gosh, what have I gotten myself into? This is not easy and you know was really confronted and just had to power through it and pray to get to the other end in one piece and without losing my mind but it was a process that did stretch me and i grew immensely throughout it and i enjoy writing even more now and i loved the process 
It makes me wonder then, would you ever say that writing and music go hand in hand? I I think so. I mean, it, it wasn't until maybe four or five or six years ago that I, I thought, you know, I feel like I have music inside me to write. And I, I just finally sat down one day when my kids were busy watching a TV show and I said, I'm going to take this hour and I'm going to write my first song, whether it sucks or not. And out of it came a, a song that I was like, oh my God, wow, that's not half bad. I really like this. And, you know, it's whether writing in music or uh, writing in a book, I, I feel that it's um, it's a profound experience. And for me as well, I sometimes don't feel that I'm able to articulate what I want to get across when I'm speaking to someone uh, and especially when it comes to a, maybe a more of a sensitive topic. But for some reason, when I sit down to write and put pen to paper or sit at my computer, what ends up coming out of me, it's like, you know, God or the universe just sticks their hands out and boom, blesses you with something that, that you just didn't know you had in, in you. You know, it's, it's really <laughs> interesting. Your new album, Hymns of the Heart, released October 1st. Yeah. You could have recorded anything. So why choose hymns? Uh, I've always wanted to do an album of hymns and it just kind of never felt like the right time. And then to be honest with you, I think like many of us, I really struggled and have, and I'm still struggling a bit throughout these rolling lockdowns and the pandemic. And I've always found so much comfort in hymns. Um, whenever I stand to sing, in church or, or stand to sing anywhere if i if i'm singing something that's sacred or hymns i you know i i just get this wave of goosebumps that comes over me it's hard to explain but it's like i i'm just taken to a different place and i feel so much comfort and hope and like my my faith is restored and so i just really felt that that music in particular resonated with me in this phase of my life so I thought, okay, I'm going to record this album of hymns. It's going to be the ones that really touch me the most and have significance to me and my family. And um, the first piece that I released, which was My Voice Belongs to Him, those lyrics were sent to me by a dear friend, Von Harbin, and he's a poet. And I wept when I read those words because it's like, that's how I feel when I sing this music. How did he get inside my head? And I guess as writers, <laughs> that's what we're able to do, you know? That is the point of this show, is that I speak with artists about how faith plays a role in their music. Mm -hmm. So the line from My Voice Belongs to Him says, He spoke beauty into life and love from deepest space, anoints the voice of ones who sings, sweet hymns with heaven's grace. That really does make it sound like you were destined to sing this hymn. I, yeah, when he sent me those lyrics and said, I wrote this with you in mind, I was just sort of floored. All I can say, it was, it was just an absolute blessing. Like that is a true gift in my mind. When someone gifts you something like that, that came so deeply from their heart and that you know they were, you know, really thinking about you when, when they gave you that gift. It was just mind-boggling to me. I'm Tanya evans Chenchuli, and you are tuned into The Antidote. Of all the songs that I have sung, there are some I adore. What happens when I see
something about hymns of the heart and i can't imagine how you did it because there's hundreds and hundreds of hymns you could have chosen Mm -hmm. how did you make the choices uh you know for me it's always whether i'm putting together a christmas concert or an album it's always what are the songs that make my eyes well up with tears right away when i hear the intro to the song or when i start to sing the words and all of those pieces do that for me And there were a few other hymns that didn't make it to the final cut. And it's not that they're not beautiful and not that they're not meaningful, but they just didn't give me that kind of wave that washed over me of like, oh, my God, yes, this really does it for me, you know? (laughs) It sounds like you've recorded the album for yourself more than your listeners. (laughs) You know, I did definitely record it for myself as as a way to... um, I think as a way to restore my own faith, as a way to like, you know, refuel and and encourage myself along the way throughout this pandemic. And and I just thought that if it gives me this much joy and I'm a singer and probably the worst critic of my own voice, then hopefully it will bring, you know, that amount of joy and peace to other people as well. Well, you've already spoken about the diversity of music that you perform. Is there one that stands out the most for you? I think that, um, I mean, with this album, I really, my, my, some of my family members commented saying, this sounds different. And I said, yeah, because I'm not standing and blasting it like I normally would in church with like this big grandiose voice. Right. And I really tried to sing. Honestly, I tried to picture myself almost like sitting at my child's bed and and lightly singing to them if they were, you know, sad or scared, a a more comforting tone. And I'm really enjoying that style of singing. And I also last year recorded an entire album of new original music that kind of speaks to some of uh, my Newfoundland roots as well. And then just some other personal experiences that I went through and you know, the songwriting process is so therapeutic. This new album will have certainly a bit of a Celtic folk vibe to it. It's just a style of music that I've just fallen in love with lately. Not that I don't still love opera, but it's like there's a time and a place for that, you know? (laughs) 
you recorded two albums then in a single year. I did. <laughs> Are you just a glutton for punishment? <laughs> I think so, but I think I was just, I said to my producer, I said, honestly, I'm so grateful that you allowed me to come into your home and, and work with you through this year because it saved me being able to be creative, like not being able to perform, but being able to still be creative and go through the process of writing and recording and collaborating with people that you love. It just was such an amazing experience. And it just gave me so much hope and like, you know, reason to get up the next day. Yeah. I, I was a little bit of an overachiever last year. <laughs> 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 well, you decided the title would be hymns of the heart. Is that accurate? Is it actually from your heart? Oh, absolutely. I, I, and throughout the album, after I believe five different selections, there's a few like little snippets of me speaking. And I did them all in one take. And I just really, truly spoke from the heart to them. No sort of, this is Tanya, now I'm going to sing. You know, it was really, it felt raw. It felt real. I had tears in my eyes. My producer turned around and looked at me like, you're going to make me cry. But I just said, this kind of music and this album, I want it to be an experience for people. You know, I just want to be nothing but real and honest and just, you know, my heart is on my sleeve and the whole album for me just feels like one big prayer, you know? Well, the world is opening up again for all of us. What comes next for Tanya Evans Chinchuli? <laughs> Well, I, I mean, I do have that other album that I'll be working towards to, to release next year. But in the meantime, I'm continuing to write and homeschool my two kids. And I might even be deciding to go back to school online and get my master's in psychology. So we'll see. <laughs> I don't know if I'm setting myself up for more punishment or not, but... <laughs> <laughs> Remember earlier when I referred to you as an anomaly, I got to point out that on The Antidote, you really are an anomaly. I'm usually visiting with metal, punk, and rock bands, so I've got to thank you for raising the level of this show, Tanya. Oh, thank you so much. This has been really enjoyable. My life goes on in endless Thank you. 
when tyrants tremble in their fear and hear the death knell ring when friends rejoice both far and near How Can I Keep From Singing, another of the hymns found on Tonya Evans Chinchuli's Hymns of the Heart. That hymn has had a few lyric changes over the last 150 years. I guess most notably when Pete Seeger recorded his folk version back in the 60s. But Tonya's is closer to the original. Now, I did warn you we were going to hear a bunch of genres tonight. Like this fresh old pop track. Super Tropicali from Flurry. (laughs) 